you just read it. So Angela Floss? <laughs> That's not even close. No, dude, it's you you were right on the money. Sahangela Floss. What's up guys? Welcome to the next Critique the Community. Today we're going to be looking at images from Iceland, but we're going to be doing something a little different because I have chosen images in groups of three with the same subject matter or same location. And we're going to be comparing good, better, and best images that are rated by the community and us. Are we still throwing and the same numbers? Or? I, I don't know. I don't know if we need to rate them. We can kind of figure that out as we go. But the basic idea here is that you're going to be able to see what makes a great photograph compared to another image that might not quite stack up. But if you'd like to be a part of the next critique, you can upload your pictures of swimwear and lifestyle photography right now. We're actually going to Miami next week. We're going to be with Joey Wright. We've done a swimwear photography tutorial with Joey Wright that was awesome. I mean, he's so good at what he does. And so he's gonna be the guest of the next critique. So if you've taken pictures of lifestyle, well, what's the other word that you were using before? Like catalog? Like resort wear maybe? Like yeah. catalog, clothing, you know, they don't have to all be swimwear. It could be like cover-ups and stuff. But anything that's kind of shot outside with a natural light kind of vibe. Yeah, we're not looking good. for indoor studio shots. These are specifically like women's clothing, swimwear, outdoorsy stuff. You guys got it. You can go to the link, upload those right now. Are you ready to get to this critique? I believe after? so, and I'm, I'm going to guess we've changed the format here. This is not the highest rated image, Yeah. So is I, this? I have remembered what the highest rated image is, so when we get to it, I'll let you guys know. The highest rated image will get a tutorial from fstoppers.com slash store including the next one coming up with Joey Wright. You can check out his tutorial as well. We're also going to be giving a free tutorial away to one random person. Choose a number. Let's do random number three. So number three is going to be the best church shot. So the basic premise here is each set of three images is going to be a similar location or similar theme, similar subject, something like that. The first three images here are church images. So we don't, I don't think we need to rate each one of these. We can kind of just talk about them and they're going to go good, better, best. Well, what's interesting is there's two churches in Iceland, I remember, mm -hmm. the one in Reykjavik, which is like the crazy modern church. Okay. And then there's like the black church that yeah. everybody shoots. This is neither of those. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see if you've picked out three of the same, I can't imagine they're this, I've never seen I didn't, church. in this case, I couldn't find three great examples of, of the same. same church. So I just chose three different church images here. Okay. This one was one of the lower rated images of a church. And I feel like, kind of like you said, there's other churches in this country that are amazing. This one looks a little plain and boring. But then I think when you add that to this lighting and this relatively boring sky and this strange composition where they're cutting off half the church and then this strange bush on the bottom right, I think it's all working together to feel cheaper than it actually is. Yeah, the one thing that's really working well for it is the flag, you know? It's like, it could be such a cool image to represent Iceland, but like you said, there's nothing on the on the bottom part of the frame to kind of anchor it. It just seems like a really poor crop down there. So let's move on to the next shot. This shot, Okay. is, you know, arguably a much more simple photograph. This is a different church, too. I don't think this is a church I would have... Exactly. There's a lot of churches in Iceland. You know, I, I don't think there's anything mind-blowing about this shot, but I think that little piece of fence at the bottom really brought it together for me yes. and kind of makes it a, a fine art shot rather than a snapshot because it's so perfectly symmetrical. This is another one of those images where I think we had last time or... We had a shot with the blue sky that went pure black, you know, where you do the black and white conversion, but you can tell it's being hit with the hard sun. Yeah. I really like this. I mean, it's it's so graphic and simple. The, the symmetry is really nice. So the community gave this one 3.0 stars. Let's move on to the next one. And this was one of the highest rated images in the entire critique. It's uh, not the highest the same, rated. This is the same church as the first church. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> it shows no. how big of a difference. Look at the windows. Oh my god! It shows how big of a difference just finding the right angle. I know. That's so wild. I mean, this first church just feels like any boring church from North Carolina. And then if this the photographer one... only knew, they're just on the other side of this <laughs> embankment. 
Well, what what's so, so hard to believe? I mean, it, it appears that the ocean is right there. Is in the shot, so it's so weird. What is this? What plant is this? I don't know. I was gonna say this is lavender. Or That's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to sound dumb if it's not at all. But uh, I feel like this shot's awesome. They've obviously done some sort of light painting or time blending here. I love the uh, you know sharp foreground, foreground with the, the blurry sky. I think it's all working together and. That's why the community rated this one 3.68. So this is one of the highest rated in the entire critique. I see images like this, and I just wonder, like, what is the attendance at that church? Like, it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Well, all of the church, I mean, everything in Iceland is in the middle of I nowhere. Know, it's and like all the churches are that There's five people that go there every Sunday. Yeah, I mean, probably so. Uh, well, congratulations. You won the first tutorial. You can check it out at fstoppers.com slash store. David will send you a private note on uh, fstoppers, and you can let them know what you'd like. Moving on. So oh then, boy, the horses. Yeah, next next set are horse images. And uh, there's that many submissions of horses, huh? There were a lot of submissions of horses. That's yeah, cool. I, I wasn't expecting that at all, but lots of, uh, of horse images. Uh, this is one of the lower rated ones. And even though the horse is looking at the photographer, I mean, the fact that you're shooting through a fence, that automatically cheapens it. Like, if there's a chance that they were wild they might still be wild i yeah. mean there were fences all over the place in iceland that doesn't mean they were you know they were like reindeer the farms there are huge to where even if you're on a farm it might be thousands of acres <laughs> yeah you know? exactly but who knows i mean this could be a wild horse but probably not and i just think it kind of pulls you out and then the lighting and the fact you've got that blown out sky back there and i like shallow depth of field but maybe this is too shallow can't really tell what's going on in the background uh, Do you I, like that the mountain leads right into his ear? I guess <laughs> not. Kind of I guess not. I don't know. I, I just feel like everything, once again, is kind of working against this image, and it feels a little bit cheaper than some of these other horse shots. So moving on to number two here. Um, mm -hmm. Very interesting composition with these three horses. Um, I don't know how much I like the houses in the background. I think the houses are certainly better than they would have been if the houses were super new and nice and modern. I think it kind of feels yeah. like a farmhouse, which is cool. Um, I think I might also like to see a little bit more contrast in the black and white conversion. What do you think? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe in the sky. I feel like the contrast is pretty nice here. Okay. Doesn't really bother me. What really stands out to me is how good the hair is on the horses. Look at that. They, have, they all it's have like the same swoosh. blow dried hair. Yeah, I mean, I think my issue with the with the black and white conversion, look at their legs. Look at how so dark their legs are. And then look at their faces. It's like there's no black in the top portion of their body. But then on the bottom portion, it's almost all black. So it seems like something weird's going on there. But, Maybe uh, a little bit less contrast on the lower part of their body. I, I like the way their faces look. You want a little bit more burning in think there. I think I do. I don't know. I just want it to be more even across the board. And the highest rated horse image is this one. The community rated this one 3.13. And uh, I think this is super cool. I mean, obviously the snow takes it up a notch. I might feel that there's too much contrast here though. What, what do you think about seeing the detail in some of these really dark horses? To be honest, I think I like the last picture better. There's aspects of the last the picture last that I do picture like a lot better. The last picture I think better. is cooler. Like this yeah. one, this one's brighter and airier and more editorial. I think this would be used more often if somebody needed an image to talk about whatever it is in Iceland with the horses. I feel like this might have more use. The other one feels a little bit more fine arty, but I don't know. Like I keep going to the horse on the left that's completely covered in the snow and it's kind of hard to read what he is. I mean. <laughs> I mean, obviously, obviously he's a horse. <laughs> okay. But he looks I don't know, he's got a mask on or something. Yeah. I feel like your mom right now. I don't know, that horse over there, he just looks like he has a mask on. <laughs> All right, moving on. All right, so the next three shots are images of ice caves. All okay. right. And so far, we have not gotten to the stereotypical images of Iceland. I didn't do that on purpose. It's just Did you intentionally try to find weaker images? Like, number one's always going to be yes. the weakest. Yes. And did you leave out some other incredible ice cave photos to include 
a Absolutely. weaker one in there? Okay. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, in some cases, some of these shots coming up, there might have been like 30 examples from this location, right. and I chose three. Yeah. So, yes, I, I did leave out better images purposefully. So this is one of the weaker ice cave shots. This is like a ice crevasse. Um, What's cool about this is it shows you the magnitude of the ice. So many of the other shots I assume we're gonna see, you're in the cave. Yes. And it's, I don't, you know, this composition's not really working and the lighting and everything, but it is pretty incredible to see it from up above. And many people I feel like neglect that shot. That's true. Um, the other thing that I'll say is because there's a person in the shot, you can tell how big it is. If there mm -hmm. wasn't a person there, yeah, you wouldn't know if this was the size of your hand yeah. or if this was the size of an airplane. You know, it's very difficult to tell with ice. So I do like the fact that there's a person here, but I feel like this person and their clothing and their pose, it just doesn't feel like a very epic shot. It feels kind of more like a snapshot. There's also this leading line coming up from the bottom, but I feel like the whole bottom left of the image where the, the snow is is kind of boring. I wonder if you could crop this tighter to where that line goes straight to the edge and maybe get rid of some of the sky up above and clone the person out change a lot but you know if you could just crop it here okay yeah 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 if yeah. you just cropped a lot of the white from the left side of the frame out yeah i, I think that's uh, probably good advice let's move on to the next shot here oh wow so, yeah so this is almost like the same shot but shot in the opposite direction um it's kind of difficult to tell what's going on like is that a person up there yeah okay i i mean i or can't, a child i can't really tell um it, it, it's so small, but the reflections in this ice look amazing. Yeah, and uh, you know, that's the thing with any of these ice caves, is they just look so strange from below. Or you expect them to look like this, and then you go somewhere and they don't, and you're like, how did they do that? Well, this see, looks so clean. You know, a lot yeah. of the ice had a bunch of dirt in it and stuff, but this really looked amazing. All yeah, right, we had a lot of cocktails with that ice. That's true. Our That's true. Would chisel, ch he'd chisel them off and he'd have the glacier ice. Yeah, we actually learned that glacier ice is some of the most dense ice in the world because it's been compacted over millions of years. And um, so billionaires will pay to have glacier ice, you know, chiseled off or whatever. And keep in mind, it breaks off and falls into the ocean. So you can just pick it up. You don't yep. have to actually chop anything off. And they will keep it on their yachts and on their airplanes mm -hmm. and they'll keep it refrigerated and it's just like ready to go for their cocktails and they can have glacier ice at a moment's notice. So we notice. got to live like billionaires for one evening. <laughs> That's right. When we had our cocktails with glacier ice. That's right. All right, so this next shot here is the highest rated uh, ice cave shot. Again, I'm just gonna say it. I like the one in the middle, the second image. I think I, that's more unique. I might unique. feel the same way. I might feel the same way. I mean, this shot, is kind of similar to the one that Elia took. If you've seen Photographing the World 1, we went to Iceland with Elia Licardi. We shot an ice cave very similar to this, and Elia posed himself in the cave. Because once again, if there's not a person in this shot, you would have no clue what yeah. you were looking at, how big it was. So I think it's important to show a person in these photographs. Yeah. Community gives this one 3.55. Yeah, this one, I just keep finding my mind wandering. Like, I don't think it's using, even though it's rated highly, I don't think that it's using leading lines and the composition's safe, but it's not exquisite. It's not like this one. I mean, that one, goodness, it's like, it's so jarring and it, it brings a lot of interest to the frame, I think. Next up. All right, here we go. Now we're getting to the stereotypical Iceland shots. This is Kirkjafell. This is a very famous mountain. And the reason why a lot of this stuff is so famous and so overshot is because... It is beautiful. It's I mean, it's ama amazing, but they're also right off the road. Yeah. So every person, whether you're on vacation or you're a photographer, you're you going to stop by here. Right past it, yeah. And then the path leads you right to the spot where the best photographs are taken. Um, this is not that spot. So this photographer actually moved forward, got a different mm -hmm. angle. You'll see the stereotypical angles coming up. But I feel like because they did that, this image is kind of boring to me. What do you think? 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, you look at it and you say, oh, I got the reflection and everything. But the shape of this mountain, as cool and unique as it is, it doesn't, in my opinion, really add a lot in the reflection. It just makes it this weird diamond shape that, again, I would argue the composition here isn't like, it leads your eye everywhere. There's no great lines that are pulling you into the frame. It's a so, great overall exposure, though. I mean, it's nothing super exciting, but solid shot. So next up is the more stereotypical location. This is where everyone photographs Kirkshafell from. Um, this was a middle rated shot here. This kind of looks similar to the one that Elia Locardi took in the uh, Photographing the World tutorial. What do you think of this one? I really like this. It's just, it's, is it the clarity slider? Something is just, it's too sharp everywhere and I just feel like I remember, I remember critiquing some of these images in a critique the community before we had ever gone there. And we saw these pictures, you remember? And they had like made everything neon and we were like, that can't be real, it's a computer generated image. And then once you're there, you realize this is how it looks. But something with the sharpening and the, the contrast or the micro contrast, it's, it's, a little, it's a little much for me. But I know when you're trying to compete with every other photographer who shot this location, you're trying to do everything you can to make your image as vibrant and over the top as possible. I don't know if that's the direction I would go, but. Next up is the highest rated shot, which is pretty interesting. I, I don't think this is a good example of what I was saying. Like this is lit and processed in such a subtle, soft manner, even though it might really be processed heavily. I mean, they may have really had to blend in the Northern Lights, but the final outcome, this just looks so much softer. And you have the city lights, the little town nearby is mm -hmm. actually lighting the mountain. Mm -hmm. To me, this looks more natural and classy than the one previously that is just, you know, it's so nuclear. I'll agree with that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't look at Icelandic photos very often, but it seems a lot more rare to see this with snow yeah. than the summertime shots. I see the summertime shots everywhere. So uh, I really appreciate so it. It's the season. This. I mean, we went, when did we go? Like, we were there for Thanksgiving, which was kind of late for most people. I just don't think your average person is going to go to Iceland in the winter. I would, like to, I would like to go deeper in the winter. Like, I've never seen Iceland in the summer. The, we were there kind of on the cusp where it was starting to snow. But, like, to me, this looks incredible. Community gives this one 3.06 stars. Next up. So... For this next set, I chose large places with little people. Okay. Uh, there were tons of submissions with photographers in the shots or people in the shots, people standing in front of yep. waterfalls. So this is, I think, one of the lower rated images of a person standing in front of an epic scene. I think it's still pretty interesting. Yeah. But I think with the lighting, the sky, um, you know, the pose of the photographer and everything, it just feels a little cheaper than some of the images coming up. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I know this location we didn't photograph, but this is outside of Vic, I believe, which is kind of towards the end if you do the loop, okay. right when you get back to the airport. This is very close to where we got our van stuck. We had to get uh, out and push. But there's some incredible shots of this too, where I think that's like a black sand beach. And so like those monuments there that are standing up are pretty incredible. Next up. Here it is again. Yeah, so same location, different angle. I, do you think this is from like a hotel swimming pool or something? Or I don't know if this is a pool on the beach, but I thought this was pretty interesting. It's interesting. It, I don't know that I've seen this composition before, but something about it still, it's, it's like those two spires just standing on their own. Maybe it's more interesting than I think, but I just, yeah, I can also see some of the haloing around it, especially the left one. Well, let's see if you it's like- Clever use of doing something different, but I don't know that I'd love it. Well, let's see if you like one of the highest rated images with a little person in it. What do you Is think little of person this? derogatory? <laughs> not in this sense. No, not in this sense. That's actually what they want to be called now, as little people. But perspectively little person, what do you think about this shot? What I like about this is I don't know that I would immediately say this is Iceland. It and looks, this is it looks, the same location though, right? It is, I mean, it is. is but the way this is composed, it's not the typical shot. At least I haven't seen this shot. 
Um, and then what is going on in the sand? Like that's that's one of my favorite parts about yeah. this shot is those like swooping lines of seaweed or something that's red down there. That looks awesome. And I feel like if you didn't have the detail in the foreground, this image would lose so much. Do you like the footprints of the photographer leading to where he is? I don't think it bothers me. It uh, kind of tells a story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if there were footprints everywhere, yeah, I would. think it would bum me out, but I really like this. Community gives this one 3.32. I want to say the name of this place, but I'm going to butcher it so bad. I was hoping you were going to say it so I wouldn't have to. And I don't know the look. I'm trying to remember the location <laughs> name, but it's it's in like the Snelled Feed Nest penin like <laughs> Peninsula or something. Well, you already butchered that, so why don't you just read this? Does it have the name on it? Yeah. Oh, lawn. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Launder. Laundry mat. <laughs> Laundren car. I don't know how to pronounce it either. This is a really cool shot on the coast. You're kind of shooting down all these cliffs here. Uh, again, this is one of the lower rated shots of this um, location. I feel like we've got some pretty hardcore HDR and vibrance going on here. And it's it's kind of taking things to 11. What's crazy is this is exactly where we photographed it, as are many of the locations. It's like where you go. But where we were was pretty precarious. Like you had a drop that was 100, 200 feet straight down. But then with the snow and the ice and everything, it, like this would freak me out a little bit more knowing Yeah, you gotta be real careful. I mean, people die in Iceland all the time just because there's no fences. They expect you to be smart. I think this one, they just built a fence and it was not where we wanted to stand. Okay. So. But I will say this location was so incredible to see, but I remember thinking it's very hard to get a cool composition. Alaya was a little further ahead and there's this is actually an island right here in front and he used this whole wide angle shot to show the entire coast and island. But I, I thought like a telephoto shot, kind of more like this might look cool, but as beautiful as this is, I feel like this is kind of a hard place to photograph. So I'm interested I to I agree, see. I wasn't really happy with the way that Elias shot came out either. So let's move on to the next shot. This so is closer to what he did, but maybe a different time. I, but he was a little higher up too. I think this is looking pretty cool. Um, I might crop in a little bit. It seems like the the turbulence of the water is a little bit more interesting to me than all of that cliff on the far right side. So I might zoom in just a little bit if it were me, but I feel like this is a really cool shot. And what's interesting about this uh, specific critique, if I remember correctly, is I believe the same photographer took this shot as the next one. So check this one out. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, this was super interesting because now it's not really about this location as much as it is about the northern lights and the stars and the photographer and showing the scale of everything. And so I thought this was a super cool take on this image. And I think looking at all three of these, the middle one's really cool. I really do like that one, but something about doing the vertical composition seems to work better in this location for some reason. I well, think because it's so easy to get just that whole horizon of the ocean that there's nothing that interesting out there. The second picture, they did a good job of putting something in the foreground to kind of minimizing that, where the first image, the first image, they have these nice swells and waves coming up, which helps. I think with Elias, it was just like this flat ocean forever. And I was like, eh, there's not a lot you can do with that. Community rated this one 3.46. Moving on. Now, this was something that I kind of wish we had seen, but apparently there is a wrecked airplane in Iceland that you can go out to and play on and take pictures of. Uh, we didn't do that when we were there. We were not acting like typical tourists. No, we were not. Uh, we were, we just not in this way. But uh, this is one of the lower rated ones. I feel like, you know, something crazy is going on with the contrast here. We've got crazy haloing over the uh, airplane itself, and then we've got no detail in the foreground at all, plus the composition's weird, right? Yeah, there's not much about this image that's working. So next up, we have what I you would assume to be a photographer, a photographer's buddy or whatever, sitting, playing guitar on 
the airplane wing. I think it's interesting putting a person on there. We got a lot of submissions of people standing on this thing. But when you look at the lighting and what's in the background and the sky and everything, I, I feel like this is okay. It's certainly an amazing vacation photograph, but as a professional photographer, what are you gonna do with this? I don't really yeah. know. And oh, so it's so frustrating to see like the graffiti and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. the more that people go that. to these locations, it's, it's crazy people don't respect don't respect this the, trash, the trash that never got picked right, up. Right, but <laughs> you know, it's something that's important to a lot of people. And the final shot also has a person in it, but I feel like this is done in a very unique way. We've got amazing colors here. The lighting is fantastic on this plane. The sky looks amazing. We've got detail in the foreground. The color you know, of the hammock versus the guy's jacket looks great. We've got the uh, motorcycle. I mean, I could see this being an ad for BMW motorcycles. I love this shot. Not for the airplane company? Probably not for the airplane company. There's something about, and I know Iceland has some of the most amazing skies and the weather changes and you have these really long sunsets because it's so high up, but something about just the blue sky on the left that it seems like you could bring it down like 10%. It's too colorful. It seems, just, especially if you look at the horizon right along the bike, it's just yeah, like those blues are just a little nuclear. I that's don't mind point. the blue on him, yeah. but the sky to me, just pull it down just a little bit. But I, I really do like the shot. This is a clever, and it's one of those things where because you work the scene, this is an image no one else will have. They'd have to flat out rip you off to create this. Where Great so point. many of these shots, yeah. you're trying to get the northern lights over this and you want the swoosh to come right over Crooked. <laughs> and it's like, okay. But this is, you know, a unique shot to this location. Community gives it 3.06. Uh, something else we did not get to see. Did we not see any puffins at all? I didn't. Hmm. Maybe they were like flying really far away, but I never got close to them. There are puffins in Scotland, right? Maybe that's where I've seen them. Maybe. I, I, I grew up with these in Alaska, but I never oh, got okay. to see the ones in, in Iceland. So, yeah. So, the next three shots are of these birds. Uh, this is one of the lower rated shots. And I think what makes this feel a little bit more snapshotty and less professional is the angle. Uh, I think shooting down on birds or up on birds especially, it just doesn't feel very intimate. Mm -hmm. It feels more like a snapshot than, oh, you waited for that perfect location and perfect composition. It's still a pretty good shot, it's though. It's not bad. It's like telephoto, and you got the nice blur in the background. I wish his head had turned around a little bit. I mean, it's not awful by any means. No, not by any means. If you saw this bird on your vacation and this was the shot you got, it'd be worth sharing. Like, I think people would be excited that, oh, Would I you put it on your website? I'm about to find out, because the next <laughs> two shots apparently are going to be much better. All right, so next up... This is like a middle rated puffin shot. And I feel like this is much better. I mean, first of all, we got two puffins interacting. I think that's great. But look at the angle that the photographer's on. I mean, they are right on the same level with these birds. It feels right. so much more intimate. And then... I do like that. But I feel like if I go back, I love the color. I don't want to say shooting down's good, but in this case, like if the mountain or something was behind them, it's, it's very simple. But in some ways, I like the color behind him in the first shot. Are you saying this first shot is better than the second shot? I mean... There's no, no. The answer is no, Patrick. It's not better. Okay. I mean, I, I like the angle. I just would love for there to be color and contrast behind them. Okay. And there is a little. You see just that gradient, but... And the next shot... Okay. ...happens to be the highest rated shot of this entire critique. So, oh, wow. you so won your... a free tutorial. Congratulations. This was rated 3.91 by the community. Um, it's very difficult to get up to four stars. So, uh, everyone this is liked incredible. this best. My question is, is how much post-production has been put into this image? I mean, to me, it doesn't feel like much at all. What, well, what yeah. do you think is going on here? I don't know. I don't know. I just... I know that you get a great shot like this with the, the shallow depth of field and the, you know, but it's this flare on the right hand side and maybe it's because I've been playing around in Exposure X5, their new software. It's not a plug for them, but I know that you can put a lot of these overlays and get these really cool lighting effects. Even if they did, does that pull anything? It doesn't. Away from I just said image? I was curious to know how much post production <laughs> has been done. It would be crazy if the file straight out of your camera that you saw in the back looked close to this. Yeah. 
Um, maybe it did. Maybe it looked closer than I, than I think it did, but this is an incredible photograph. Next up. Next up. You remember how to pronounce this? No. Can you just <laughs> read it? So, Hangela Floss? That's not even close. No, dude, it's you. You were right on the money. Sahendula floss. Salia lans foss. That yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to be a tour guide in Iceland years ago. All right. Nobody questioned my pronunciation. <laughs> Everyone, and they're like, floss. Where are you getting the L from? And you're like, that's how the locals pronounce it. The L is not just silent, but it's the uh, F. It's a fl. <laughs> the flaw sound, yeah. okay. Yeah, so this waterfall is really interesting because you can walk behind it. Um, and a lot of the best shots and the highest rated shots are not directly behind the waterfall, yeah. but off to the side where this photographer was. Now, this is one of the lower rated images of these shots. And I think that's because, you know, you got the blown out sky, you've got a million people here. There's also water spots all over the lens. It's just not the best example of this image. Do you have anything specific to say about this? Not really. I mean, it just seems like a snapshot that somebody got there and... From a cool location, but yeah, yeah. Not, not too much going into it. Let's move on to the next shot. So this, obviously, same location, no people better composition um not better composition better weather i feel like you know yeah, with the, the sunset very similar yeah. if you scroll i just keep scrolling back and forth and i think this is a great lesson just to know how dramatic lighting can affect your scene i mean if you look at the left bottom left of the scene it has all these nice highlights and just gives so much shape yeah whereas if you look at the previous shot it's overcast and there are shadows but it's just so flat, boring. There's there's no drama there. Now there's something weird going on with this shot. It's got some sort of like hazy filter, like a smoothing filter on it. Are you, do you see that? Like especially in the top can, right. Yeah, upper the... right looks like that. I'm not a fan of that at all. I do not like the way that looks. I don't know if it's some HDR thing you guys are doing. I'm not a huge fan of that. But let's move on to one of the highest rated shots here. I feel like, you know, again, similar location. We've got a similar lighting effect here. Sun is setting in almost the same place. I feel like this is just done a little bit better though. There's elements of the second shot that I like. Oh boy, here we go. Better. I like that it has the space. The waterfall has space, like you can see it. Where in the third shot, the waterfall is coming straight through the mountain. Mm. But now that I look at the two, I do like in the third shot, the foreground, there's a little bit more weight there where I feel like in the first shot, the, the lake itself, the pond that the waterfall is creating kind of cuts in. But again, this is starting to get in that realm of just like, is it a little too over the top? Uh, and I don't know if it's I, the- I, I think it is. I don't is. know if it's the purples in the, in the sky. Again, if that's what it looked like, this is just you know proof of how amazing and spectacular nature can be. But if it's been composited, I kind of feel like the sky, maybe I'd go for a warmer tone than the purples, just because it adds one other color palette. Maybe I would even take the natural sky and change it a little bit so that it just, it just adds so much more color to an overall image that's a lot of greens and yellows. It just makes it feel a little over the top to me. I agree. Community gives it 3.0 stars. All right, the final set here is from Vestahorn, and uh, this is a shot that was in the last critique, not this exact image, but this location that inspired us to do yep. this entire critique. So what's interesting about this is you can, you can shoot this mountain over the top of this water, and depending on the depth of the water and the season and everything, you can make it look like a perfect reflection if you want to. There's a few different uh, changes the photographer. It's kind of like a mud flat, I think, where the tide comes in and it's just so small that it allows the water to be really stable. And so you get that nice reflection. You can see it here just because of the glossiness of the, the sand itself. So this shot obviously is one of the lower rated shots. I feel like it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's certainly very interesting, but 
we've got that direct sunlight hitting the mountain, and then we've got you know this really heavy vignette that I feel like is a little, little overblown. And it's also I think this one's been stitched too because you have this like stitch line in the sky going straight down. I didn't even notice that until now. Yeah, right in the middle, a little off to the My left. My eye also keeps going to this one highlight in the dark part of the sand. I would just clone that out, like the bottom right. Yeah, I agree. Like just clone that out and, but. I don't know if this shot's totally salvageable. It's it's not bad, but I don't know if this would be a portfolio image. Moving on. Now this shot, I really liked the detail in the sand or the yeah, mud. Yeah, that texture is incredible. Yeah, that, that adds a lot of interest to me. I've seen a lot of submissions that are just perfect reflections, and I feel like it's so perfect a lot of times that it doesn't even look real. It looks or like it has no weight render. to the bottom of the frame. You know, it just looks like it's completely flipped over in Photoshop. And it, because of that, it, it, this has a weight to it that I think really sets the image well. And then the tips of the mountains, Eli was always talking about that. You want the, the last sun rays on the tips of the mountains and definitely That's what have this that. photographer here. got. Yeah, I think it looks really nice. And one of the highest rated shots in this location didn't even incorporate the water. Mm -hmm. which I appreciated. This is a little bit different than almost everything else that was submitted. Uh, they've backed up and they've shot the sand dunes rather than the, uh, the water. They've gotten some footprints here, but again, like we said in the other shot, it's just one set of footprints, so it doesn't look like it's trashed. It looks yeah. like this was how it was meant to be. What is your thoughts personally just on the whole sun setting with the flares? Like this is a technique that a lot of photographers do. We've taught this in our tutorials. But are you a fan of this or would you prefer like a minute later when the sun's set and you just have a nice warmth over there but not the sun coming through the mountain? I don't know. I you know, I'd probably shoot through the entire sunset and then I would choose whatever was most interesting so there's something about that effect that's and then maybe this isn't even real you know sometimes you can add that too as a filter and it'll just build that on top but it works perfectly because naturally that's how the sun would be casting shadows and lights toward the camera but i don't know i just if that sun was not there you could still believe maybe you'd have to dodge like to the left but you could still believe that the sun was just out of frame but maybe it would be a little less jarring I don't know. I like, again, I like the second image here really well too. Well, this last image was rated 3.61, so it was definitely one of the higher rated images in the entire critique. That was kind of fun. Yeah. I enjoyed seeing different images. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, if, if you're a photographer who dreams of one day going to Iceland, I mean, go there, get the same shots everybody does, but also try to do something unique. There's so many possibilities out there. We really would be are. driving through areas and the weather would just look like doomsday. And we would be nowhere on a map, you know, and I would just say, we got to stop and enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe a lie didn't want to take a picture there because it wasn't the postcard image. But there were so many spots where you'd see these walls that were made of just rocks that would go on for miles. And I'm like, this is crazy, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. And all the lava rocks just lining the roads and everything. There were also a lot of locations, like we went to that, what's the biggest waterfall? It's like the biggest waterfall in all of the Europe where... Godafoss? God of, no, that's the one with uh, all the waterfalls that surround you. This is the most powerful one. I can't remember the name of it, but it was in Prometheus. But when we went there, the weather was horrible. You couldn't see much. And so a lot of these shots, the weather is beautiful, but there's a lot of opportunity too to shoot stuff where it's just dreary and gloomy and like when we were there it looked so evil and i think Elia didn't want to shoot it because of that but mm -hmm. i was thinking this is really cool we should take a picture here so um that's what's amazing about a place like iceland is there's so many photo opportunities but then if you just don't allow yourself to be influenced by what you see online you can take images that are unbelievable if you just stop and actually yeah, and I think I think you can also be inspired by photographs, but then say, I'm not I've seen it a hundred times, so like I'm specifically not going to spend my time shooting from that location. I'm going to go to another spot and try to do something a little bit unique. And that's something I appreciate with Mike Kelly's series, is he approaches Iceland from more of an architectural standpoint, but he's photographing a lot of things that 99% of photographers won't shoot. A lot of homes and a lot of statues and a lot of, you know, countrysides and stuff mm -hmm. and I feel like he 
specifically avoids all the waterfalls and everything. I'm sure he takes those pictures, but he doesn't publish them. Right. And so you can get a lot of different uh, images just in tweaking the genre that you're shooting, like they did with the horses. I thought that was pretty neat. Well guys, thank you for watching. Once again, if you have images of swimwear or lifestyle photography, upload them in the next critique using the link below. In about a week or two, we'll be with Joey Wright and we will film that video and uh, that should be a good one. Yep. See you soon. See you guys.